But here series of covering is a Piper Colt wing. Uh, it's been uncovered, it's been cleaned. We've done some initial prep on it. It's uh, getting real close to ready for cover. So what we'll do is go over a few of the things that we did to get the wings ready for cover. Uh, of course, number one is to remove the old fabric. Again, it's very important that when you take the covering off, you don't just rip things loose. You can do a lot of structural damage. So if if it's got uh, Martin clips, you want to make sure that you cut the clips loose and get them out, or in the case of rib stitching, just cut the stitching and peel the fabric back as you go. Once the wing is uncovered, then you need to take a good close look at all the ribs. Piper ribs are fairly delicate. They uh, are prone to cracking if they're bent and straightened, so if there's any repairs need to be done, you can go ahead and do those. As you can see, these wings have been cleaned up and prepped. What we do prior to cover is uh, we like to take any sharp edges that are exposed, areas like on the edge of the leading edge, both skin overlaps, areas like that, the little false ribs here. Instead of masking tape, a much preferable method of that is actually use a cloth sticky tape. It does a much better job. Masking tape tends to dry out and gets brittle and doesn't do much good after a period of time. So once the wings are prepped like this, the leading edge is all cleaned up. And another thing is that we always do on the old Piper series wings here is the uh, lift strut fittings, which you can see this area in here. We always remove those, sandblast them, check them for corrosion. And a lot of people are concerned about the lift struts and very little concern often is given to the, to the strut attached fittings in the wings. We feel that this is a very important part of a recover is to go ahead and disassemble this part. And you can actually do that without de-rigging all the, all the wires. You can pull things loose, they'll slip out of there and clean them. And uh, go ahead and spray them with a good quality uh, you know, a primer sealer. And they can be top coated and then reinstalled. Again, as you can see, all the ribs have been covered with this cloth tape that covers any of the repair areas that have been done to them. <clears throat> Once that's done, then your inner rib bracing is put in place. That holds the ribs in alignment during the recover. So you can see the, the wrap comes around the bottom of the rib across the top. <clears throat> and by starting on the bottom, you end up with just one overlap joint here in the top, and it doesn't show through your finished fabric. So. That's pretty much got the wings ready for cover. Next thing that we're going to do is uh, take a good look at it. Okay, what we have here is a set of Piper Colt wings. They've been prepped and ready for cover. You can see we've got uh, the leading edge felt has been applied. That's an option. Uh, we do that. It makes a much nicer leading edge. The felt was lightly tacked on a 3M77 spray cement. And then two coats of the Sturt Systems EcoBond was brushed through that for a primer filler on it. You can see there's been some glue has been glued around the perimeter. The nice thing about our glue system is that we can pre-glue everything, let the glue dry, and I'll do a little area here just to give an idea of what actually takes place. I'll just re-glue this spot here. I did this earlier to kind of expedite our our procedure here. But the glue's put on and coat just about like that and allowed to dry. Okay, prior to actually putting the main cover on the wings, of course we want to make sure that they're completely prepped. You can see we've got our tape on the wings, everything has been checked. We've actually fabricated new control cables. All of the uh, hinges have been pulled and sandblasted and checked. All the lift strut fittings were removed, sandblasted and checked. All those were primered with our Sturt Systems one part uh, you know, primer sealer. That actually is satisfactory for a finished coat. And now before we put the actual skin on the, on the wings, we're going to go ahead and close up all of the open bays on the end of the ribs here. And I've went ahead and pre-cut some scrap pieces of fabric. I've actually put a hole in this one to go ahead and clear the PDOT line here that comes through this butt rib. And we just slip everything in place here. And the thing that's really unique about our system here is that, as we explained earlier, we went ahead and applied the glue, and we let it dry. 
And the nice part of that is we get our fabric in place here. Now we're not working with wet glue that's given us a time frame here and constraint to work with. We're going to just work at our own speed. And once we get our fabric in place where we want it, it's just a very, <coughs> excuse me, very simple matter. Just lay it into that dry glue. Use a little bit of pressure and rub it with your hand. What that does, that just lightly bonds that to that rib structure. Now you can see here on the bottom, my rib, my run is off. We're too narrow. That's the beauty of this glue. We can just pull everything loose and redo our alignment here. Now we've got plenty of material to work with on both sides. Go ahead and just reattach the top surface here. Makes it very user friendly, easy to work with. And again, we're working at our pace here, not at the pace of the glue that's already that's wet and trying to dry. We've got to stay ahead of it. And just lightly rub everything into place. So you can see I'm pulling some pressure on that, and just that light adhesion into that dry glue is enough to keep that in place. Now before we do our final glue, take our small heat iron here. This iron sets somewhere between 200 and 300 degrees, 250 to 300. Now we're just going to make a quick little pass and you see the change of color when the iron goes. What that's done is actually thermally activated that glue. It makes a relatively strong joint at that time. Now, it takes a fair amount of pressure now to actually remove that. That's what we call our glue clamp. It replaces the need for mechanical spring clamps. Once that's done, now the process is to just brush glue down through this joint. And you notice I've not trimmed the fabric. We're going to let the glue just bleed over onto that. And what will happen now when we after the glue is dried and we trim that, we'll have a nice clean cut edge. Before the glue dries, we take a paper towel and just lightly wipe the surplus glue off. It's done two things. It's pushed the glue down through the fabric and it's wiped all the surplus off that would tend to show through the, uh, the finish once you're done. Glue's a low viscosity. There's no odor to it. There's no toxicity with it. There are not any there's, uh, there are no solvents with this material, so consequently it's, it's fireproof. You don't have a fire hazard, and you don't have toxic fumes that are coming off of the glue. We've got another scrap piece of fabric here. This is to fill in the, the nose section. Again, I pre-punched a hole in it for the nav light wire to come through. And again, we just kind of lay it into place. Now, if this glue is not quite as aggressive over the felt as it is over the bare metal, you know, what we'll do on that to go ahead and nail it down, just put a little heat on it, and that'll actually tack it right into place and hold it where we want it. And again, we just use scrap material on this because we're working at our speed here. We don't have to worry about a glue joint getting ahead of us and getting away from us. A little heat from the iron. Lays it right into where we want it and tacks it into place. Again, we just let the iron work for us. We're actually shrinking this material around the nose just a little bit to get all the wrinkles out of it. And again, the main purpose is to lightly bond that to the dried glue surface underneath. Okay, that nose rib fillet's lightly packed in place. And again, we'll take our glue. And as you can see, we're just going to brush the glue right down through that surface there. And this is what penetrates the fabric, penetrates into that glue joint underneath and gives us our real strong bond on the fabric. Normally on conditions like we have in the shop right now, it's probably about 75 degrees. Within usually about 10 to 15 minutes, you can start the first shrink. 
Okay, we've got one other area. Another just a scrap piece of fabric <laughs> that was it was cut a little earlier. Again, we can just kind of lay it right into place here. Tack it in with her hand lightly. Check it for alignment. As you can see over the bare aluminum where the glue hasn't soaked into that uh, felt quite so much, you get a lot quicker bond on there. <clears throat> and again, just pull the slack out of it. A little pressure. And you can see that even though it's not really glued on, there's enough adhesion into that bed of dried glue <clears throat> that it actually will stay in place. Again, I'll take the iron. What we want to do is just clamp it in place with the heat. This just ensures that once the wet glue gets onto there, it doesn't try to lift away from the surface. Again, there's we don't have any odor. There's no vapors or fumes coming off of this. If we had an open flame heater running right now, it would not be a problem because the glue is not flammable. The main thing when you're brushing the glue on like that is if you don't get too far ahead of yourself, because if it starts to skim before you wipe it off, you're not going to get a nice clean wipe of the glue. It's going to tend to pull and string. Okay, one other area that we like to pre-cover is the open areas at the end of the aileron bay. Show you how simple that is with this glue process is that we take a scrap piece of fabric, just lay it up into place here, kind of get it roughly where we want it, push it into place and see how it tends to stay put. Take a pen or a pencil and just mark where that radius is going to be and just pull it back off we take our rotary pinking shears. These are actually called the Florian shear. Very nice to use because they're a continuous cut. You just go ahead and pink that. I like to pink things because we don't have the frayed edges coming loose all the time. Now as you can see we've got our cut. It fits. Everything lays right into place. And then we can just go ahead and this is that piece that I demonstrated brushing the glue on. So this has been a basically no time lapse here. So the time it's spent gluing the butt into place is what glue to, uh, dry time this has. So it gives you an idea how fast it'll actually set up to where you can work it. And we're tacked into place. I'll tack it right in here a little bit just to nail it down. And again we're going to do what we call our glue of brush and wipe. You can see that glue penetrates the fabric very rapidly. You want to look for a nice change of color. Shows you got full penetration. Wipe the surplus off. Okay, we've turned the wing over. What we'll do now is just go ahead and pull the fabric over. Lightly wipe it into this dried glue. Again, nice part of that. We're working at our speed here. We're not Worrying about how fast glue is trying to set up on us. A little heat on the iron just to kind of lock that into place. And then we'll go ahead and do our brush and wipe. As you see I don't have a very big glue pot here. Typically, this is what I use all the time. A little paper cup. Stick it inside. At the end of the day, pull a little cup out and throw it away and start with a fresh one the next day. To keep the glue fresh when we're not using it, between applications, if you stop for a few minutes to work some fabric or whatever, just lay a damp paper towel across the top of the glue and it keeps it fresh. And you can use out of this pot all day long. Now these are the surfaces that we glued a little earlier. We've turned it over now. We're just going to go ahead and nail the bottom down here with a little bit of heat. Again, all that does is just prevent this joint here from turning loose when we apply the wet glue to it. A lot of times if you don't actually clamp it in place with, the, with this hot glue melt, you'll end up with the joint actually trying to roll loose and it actually comes apart. We're back to the same procedure again. We brush glue down through the joint. 
and we wipe the excess off. Okay, now once that's dry, then we can trim around the edges and go ahead and do the shrink. Okay, this is the wing that we had previously glued our material on. Come back, if there's any loose little pucker areas, we just go ahead and hit them. Now, what we're going to do is actually put a light shrink on this. The uh, total tension on this is not real important. I like to bring this up to between 250 and 300 degrees just to get some tension on it. And what this is going to do is give us a good surface for our bottom and top fabric to eventually glue into to really tie it here at the uh, root end of the wing. And you see it doesn't take very much. That's got a nice tension on it. This piece of fabric back here, we'll go ahead and apply the heat. All we're trying to do is just get the slack out of the fabric. And again, this gives us a nice finished surface for the top and bottom lays of fabric to glue into. And same thing, we'll do the nose rib. We've got the same procedure here at the aileron bay. This again gives us an area for the fabric to all tie in together, plus it seals the end of the wing off here. And that's plenty tight enough. We'll come back in a few minutes and go ahead and trim this and finish ironing around it. Okay, we've got the fabric tightened up. We're just going to cut the spoilage off the edges here now. Use a sharp razor or a good pair of scissors like this. You can see where it's already got the glue on it. It makes a really nice clean cut. Very easy to do that and get a nice clean edge. Here we're going to just cut it flush to the back edge here. And you'll find that when you do that, you actually take the iron, iron that down, rolls in and makes a real nice finished edge there. Okay, we just go around all of these surfaces and do the same thing. And all we're doing here now is just kind of finishing off these joints. So that's pretty much what we have before the wings, before we go to the actual covering of the surface itself. And then there's a method, what I call just a pure blanket method here, and where everything is glued perimeters. I prefer this method over any of them because number okay, one, you don't have, have the leading edge seams and that show up in your finish. And number two, you can get a minimum amount of slack and, and puckers in your fabric before you do the shrinking. Uh, another thing I really prefer about this, <clears throat> it's probably not too big an issue anymore, is the fact that your warp of the fabric is in the cord wires in a span-wise direction. <coughs> the warp of the fabric is the direction it runs the lengthwise of the roll. The weave is a narrow direction where the loom actually weaves the fabric. So you've got what we call the warp and the weave. I've always felt that you've got a little bit less fabric sag between the ribs if fabric is put on span-wise in the warp direction. And this is blanket. We've got the fabric pre-cut on the roll. Go ahead and get to the end of the roll here. And there's our blanket. Now the next consideration is Where's the overlap seams going to go? And it's really nice to be able to keep this fabric on in a real nice straight line. One way to do that, if you look here, you can see in this case, this is Seconite 102. And this stamps are all in a uniform line. You can see this is lining up right to the edge of the rear spar. We can use that as a reference point. You see by looking right here, this fabric is not really square to the wing. But by shifting it slightly, we can work it around here, and we can get a nice straight run of fabric on the wing. This is not real important until you stop to realize that if you have an overlap glued seam, it's really nice for your seams to be parallel and have the same wrap down the leading edge. If they don't have 
it's going to show up. Now, second point is how far do we want this fabric to wrap around? The legal lap on this is for without a sewn seam is three inches of overlap. We can allow this to come into here. We can actually allow the bottom fabric to come back. We don't need that much overlap. What we can do is scoot the fabric back about two inches here. Until we get the lay that we want on it. Again, we're about the same all the way through here. Now, we come back past the radius of the nose. That's what we want to see on the fabric when we do this. You really don't want your fabric on a glued overlap to stop where the seam is facing into the airstream. It wants to trail it. So right there is about what you should look at. Okay, we've got our fabric lay on here. What I'm going to do now, because like we showed before, when you lay the fabric with our glue system, you really need to pre-glue. So we know where the edge of this fabric is going to go. So I'm just going to put me a reference line on here. Give us an idea of how far to place the glue. Now keep in mind that the main structural strength of this, once it's done, is really the overlap seam on the fabric to fabric, not the fabric to the felt. In spite of that, the fabric to felt seam is going to be extremely strong. It's a good idea not to use ink type uh, pins when you do this. A lot of them will actually fade through the, all of your finished coats of paint. It doesn't matter what type of paint it is. A lot of your inks from pens will tend to bleed through, so I like to just use a lead pencil. Okay, so we have us a black pencil mark now. So what we're going to do is brush glue from the pencil line back up about to here somewhere. Just something for this fabric to bed into and lock in place. Okay, what we're doing now is just folding the fabric back so it's out of the way where we're going to pre-glue some of our surface here. And most wings, especially older wings, you find a lot of distortion on part of the false spar here. A good way to not have any of that ever show through your finish is to not put any glue on these surfaces. Strictly glue on the radius of the false spar. That way this fabric, when it's shrunk, can take its own natural line. So we're not going to be putting any glue here. We'll put glue on this surface. We're going to put some glue on the side. We're not going to glue on the trailing edge on the top side. We're going to put glue on the bottom, let the fabric wrap and seam, and then this again can form its natural line. Same thing around the wing tip. We put the glue. We're not going to wrap glue back into this area. We're going to start our glue from about here around. The idea being that when the fabric lays on here, we don't want glue areas here that it can get stuck into and leave an irregular edge. We want this to form its own natural uh, edge as the fabric shrunk without glue holding it down into uh, areas where it's actually past its natural line. Okay, we'll go ahead and get the glue and we'll start laying glue on it and that'll have it prepped up for the fabric to actually start to glue in place. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and start applying our pre-glue treatment to this before we lay the fabric into it. Say this has had two coats of uh, our EcoBond brushed down through the felt. What this coat does now is just provides a nice layer of glue for that fabric to go ahead and bed into. I'm going to start right around the edge here on this felt. Come up just not past that radius right there. Once this dries, and you notice we brush this on, but we don't wipe this off this time. We want a glue base there that the fabric can actually lay into and bed into. Again, we'll just kind of come right on around. Right up into here, so we get a good wrap on the fabric. And that's far enough around on that. <clears throat> we'll also, bring some glue right up around this edge here. Okay, now we'll come right on down the leading edge and go to our pencil line. 
just want a nice wet coat on there. It doesn't have to be soppy and drippy. Just enough of that fabric to have something to bed into when we start to glue it into place. Okay, we've glued around the leading edge and a little perimeter glue along the butt here. Now we're going to actually brush glue on the top side of the trailing edge here. Because again, like I said, we don't want glue on the bottom edge to cause any distortion on the fabric when it's shrunk. So we'll just do a wrap around this trailing edge and glue it right into the top surface. And I think you'll be able to see when we do the shrink on this that it makes a really a nice pretty trailing edge on them, or a junction between the fabric and the trailing edge. Any misalignment or divots don't tend to show through the fabric if you don't glue it to that, to that top surface. Okay, we've put our glue around our perimeter. And what we're going to do now is just pull our fabric right up real close to the pencil line. Just rub it into that glue on the felt. Again, it's not real aggressive when it's over the felt. We're going to get our iron. We're going to take a little heat on it here. And just kind of help it out just a little bit. Right along the edge of the pencil line. You can see how that starts to nail it right down into there. Main thing we're trying to do is keep us a nice straight edge along here. And the beauty of it, if we do start to run off, we can always pull it loose. We're not really trying to shrink the fabric. All we're wanting to do here is just get enough heat on there to make it want to stick to that glue a little bit. We've got a little bit of a pump right here because we've got our lift strut fitting sticking through. Those are actually a shallow enough protrusion that it's easier just to cover right over the top of them and then after the first initial light shrink at 250 degrees we'll go ahead and cut out and let the fabric relax and lay down around those fittings. It's a lot easier to do that than it is to try to pre-cut it and pre-fit it and then find out that your fabric slipped on you and, and your holes that you did your cut. Go over that don't want Okay, wind up. we've got the leading edge glued down. What we're going to do is just lightly tack around the root end. We can kind of pull the slack out of the fabric here. And I just lightly get things into place here. Come right on around. We can pull a little slack out and lightly tack it to this glue that we put on the top edge of the trailing edge here. And again, we can easily pull this loose if we need to. <clears throat> right now, we're going to just lightly get the things tacked into place here and hold the fabric down. When we come to the other end, go ahead and just put a little tension on it, make sure we don't have any real bad bias wrinkles in it. Like all of this is going to lay pretty well right now. Okay. Now we do have a large protrusion here, which is the, the horn. So we're going to go ahead and take our scissors. Now we know about where they're at. What we're going to do is just make a cut in the fabric here. We can let that kind of lay down around that area. Be careful not to overdo it. If you do, you might have to put a fabric patch on it. You don't really want to have to do that. You can see that lays in there pretty nice. Now what we'll do here now, pull some of the slack out of the fabric. And again, we're going to take our knife, our scissors here. And we have to cut the notch out here for where the aileron bay is. We're just going to kind of give that a little slice like that right there. And that'll let this just kind of lay into place slightly. Again, as you can see, we can lightly tack all of this fabric into place as we're going here. <coughs> it makes it very easy to work with. We've got some wrinkles and puckers just 
normally not a big problem to pull them out. If you have to, you can take the iron and do a little bit of shrinking. All you want to do is just get a, kind of get it pre-tacked into place there. <coughs> Area here that we're going to have to pull a little out of. We'll take our scissors. A couple little cuts there. Let that pull down around it. up in here are not going to hurt. Those will all iron out when we start to iron the fabric later on. A little bit of a pucker there is not going to be a problem. Again, we'll take our scissors. slack out of it. Lightly tack that into place. And that runs about where we want. We're going to go ahead and just split this right up through here. Pull this right up into the trailing edge where we brush glue into the bottom. And this is just kind of pre-tacking everything into place. Run around the wing tip. So what we'll do, we're going to go ahead and cut some of the surplus fabric off of here. We don't need that much to work with. Now we can go ahead. We have to split this about right here. Do is get around that nav light fixture. A little bit more. Okay. Again, we can kind of tack that into our pre glued area there. And compared to the solvents that you're trying to work with and stay ahead of, this is an extremely easy method to work with. Main thing is don't have any wrinkles on the tube because those will tend to show through your finish later on. Now this area here not really a problem at all to go ahead we'll put a little split in it so this can go ahead and lay down and we pull that loose okay now here's an area where we can put the iron to work for us okay we're going to let the iron do some work for us here we have a little bit of area here where the fabric needs to be shrunk just a little bit. Let it follow the contour cleanly. As we come around here, you see it start to take the lay.
Okay. And we'll take our scissors. Do a little more splitting here. Open that up so that fabric can come on around there a little better. This area's going to have to be cut out anyway. And again, we'll just kind of heat activate it into there to really nail it down. Okay. Well, just a quick pass around here. So I'm going to lock this down so it won't fall off of later on for us. Now at this point, just about where we can go ahead and flip this wing over and check all the glue joints on the other side. What we're going to do here is trim this back a little bit on the white area here. Again, a little bit of heat from the iron will really lock that into place until we get our final glue joint. Excess fabric, we're just going to go ahead and cut some of this off. I'm going to leave a little tail there because, again, get some glue out past that, it'll make a real nice clean cut line. Also, it's a good idea if you got fabric like this that's not wrinkled, it's in fairly good condition, don't wad it up, save it because you can use it later to make inspection ring covers and so forth out of it. So, that's a good usable fabric for some later finish work that you'll want to do on your wings. Okay, again, we're trimming here for the edge. Notice I'm using the pinking shears on this one. The difference is if you use pink shears, you're not going to get the frayed edges coming out. And that really, with those rotary shears, that, for my thought, that's really the preferable way to go. Makes a much nicer finish. You see how that lays down into there lightly tacks into that surface. Okay. I'm going to just tack right along this outer edge of that glue joint. Okay. We're going to go ahead and turn the wing over now. Okay, what we're done now, we're just going to go ahead and lightly bed this in. Use our iron to kind of really clamp this trailing edge. This is the top surface here. Just kind of clamp it down into place so it doesn't get away from us. And then what I'm going to do here is go ahead and just make our glue joint on it. Brush it right down through that surface so we get a real good joint. Make sure we thoroughly penetrate the weave of the fabric <clears throat> and just wipe the surplus off. And what we're doing now, we wipe that glue, we're really pushing it down through the pores of the fabric. And secondly, we're wiping off all the glue lines and ridges so we won't have anything showing through the next layer of fabric when we glue our top fabric down on top of this. We have a real nice smooth surface to lay against. And again, you don't want to go too far because if the glue starts to skim off on you, then you're going to have a difficult time wiping it off and getting a nice clean edge like that. And again, this dries relatively fast. A day like this, 10 or 15 minutes, and you're going to have a joint there that's strong enough to hold the shrinkage of the fabric. Okay, this is the trailing edge outboard of the aileron. You can see we didn't glue up more than about an inch or so, an inch and a quarter on this roughly. And what we're going to do is go ahead and make a little past, nail it down on this outer edge. We don't want to pull it loose. But what we want to do now is take our pencil 
and make a cut line on this about right at the edge of where our glue joint is. And we can just peel that loose and it's going to pretty much quit where we did our ironing on it. Take our rotary shears and we'll follow our pencil line and we'll trim this to width. This way we'll have a nice straight pinked edge that's going to show through the other layer of fabric. Makes a lot nicer fit and finish if you do this rather than just having a jagged cut line that your eye always tends to go to. If you have it nice and straight like that, you're really not going to see it. Again, once that's done, we're ready to go ahead and brush our glue down through that and get us a good strong joint on it. We wipe the surplus before we go too far. Okay. Now we'll let that dry. Okay, we're going to continue right on around. We're just going to pull this fabric around the wingtip bow. Just kind of let it lay right on into there. Put a little tension on it. You can stretch it a little bit if you're necessary, but generally, rather than stretching the fabric a lot, you're just as well off to go ahead and utilize some heat on it if you need to. So we're going to get the iron here. What I want to do right now Pull that around. I'm going to get a joint on it. I don't want it moving on me. Now, if the camera shows that discoloration line that forms underneath the sole of iron, that actually forms a, a strong, relatively strong glue joint right there by itself. Again, we'll make sure we got all the puckers pulled out of it. Continue around with the iron. You can see I'm letting it pull some of these little wrinkles out. They're on the inside radius of the corner there, so it needs to shrink just a little bit. Bring it right up to there. Okay. Now, get my scissors again, do a little cutting on that. We have a surplus of fabric around the junction here. Just kind of cut through that a little bit, just kind of trim that out of the way. There we go. And again, we'll use a little bit of heat right here. We'll shrink that fabric a little bit. See how it starts coming around there. And we'll just go ahead and Pull that right on around the radius into that glue joint. Okay. Now we do the same thing right here. We want to get a good bit of a heat bond right into here. Now we're going to take the pencil again and make us a reference line for our cut. Okay. Again, we can pull that back and get the scissors into it. You can see there it sticks fairly tightly just with the heat of the iron. And that's not anywhere near what we'd consider a good certified glue joint yet. Okay. Now, just let the iron work for us, let the heat do the work. We stretch that fabric a little bit when we pull it up to cut it. So we bring the heat of the iron around. It should just pretty well shrink those little wrinkles right back out of it. 
Let it lay right in there. Now we're ready to go ahead and brush our glue down through there and really get that joint tightened up. Again, we do our brush and wipe series. And we get a nice little penetration right down through that fabric. And wipe the surplus off. And just continue right on around the wing tip here. And let the glue come on past that a little bit. And again, like we said before, the really nice part of this whole thing here is that we've got this fabric in place, but we've not been fighting glue that's wet and we're trying to hold the fabric into the wet glue till it tacks up because we let this glue dry we tack it into the dried glue if we don't like the layup we can pull it loose once we get it to where we want it and we're satisfied with it then we're to this point right here we actually brush the glue down into the fabric and make the certified glue joint normally when you do your glue joints like this you want to get the glue lay to where you get at least a one inch overlap on it. You put a tape measure around here, you're going to see we have it in excess of an inch. So we have plenty of glue there for a, for a very strong joint. Brush that right down into the surface there. And take the paper towel. Wipe the surplus I'm going to go ahead and get this root in. I've got the slack tool and then just make a little pass here and lock it in place where we want it there. What we want to do here now, we've got some end of our spar fittings. We're just going to go ahead and cut right up beside those. Get this fabric out of the way here. Make a little cut there so it'll lay in place. We'll do the same thing down here. Okay. Now, you can see where the iron hit it, it's pretty well, in that little thin line, pretty well tacked it into place. So now, what we can do is again decide how much overlap we want here. We can take our pencil and go ahead and make us a mark. I'll just use this compression bar for a guide. And we'll cut that about there. This one here, we're going to have just about 100% overlap right here. And just let it kind of follow along about this line right through here. What we'll do is actually do a little shrinking here. Careful use of the iron. A lot of times you can get enough shrinkage around here to get a nice finish without a lot of splits and cuts in the fabric. That's not too bad. And again, we'll just kind of make us a reference line here for a cut. Like that. Take our painting shears. Again, the nice part of this is that now we don't have a bunch of frayed edges from a straight scissor cut. And then the fabric tends to stretch a little bit when you do that. So, simple solution to that is just go ahead and take the iron, 
let the iron pull those little wrinkles out of it. It'll make it lay in there for a real nice tight finish. Okay, now we've got some areas here where we don't have glue underneath that. It really doesn't matter because this glue penetrates so well that it didn't penetrate right down through that top layer of fabric and still give us 100% bond. We have to just brush the glue down through that. As soon as it gets a uniform color, you've totally penetrated all the pores of the fabric. Wing is just pretty much finished except for letting the glue dry. Then to put the first shrink onto the uh, onto this fabric. The initial shrink is always done at 250 degrees. It needs to be done in a very uniform pattern. We never start at one end, we always start at the middle and then do it in stages. What you need to do is keep that shrinkage as uniform and even as you possibly can. You don't want to get all the fabric shrunk to one end. What we're doing here now, we've got all the perimeter glued down with the exception of the leading edge here. So what we're doing, just taking iron and just going over the area where we had pre-glued it. What we want to do is just get any slack out of the fabric and just let it kind of lightly bond to that glue. That way we're not uh, trying to glue down through some bubbles or loose spots. As soon as we get this as lightly ironed like this, we'll go ahead then and take our brush and we'll glue it and wipe it like we have the rest of it. Okay, we've got all the perimeters glued down now. The leading edge has been glued. <coughs> been glued, excess wiped off. We're going to turn the wing over now. And we've got quite a bit of fabric that's surplus hanging out of the edges. We'll just go ahead and take our scissors. Or if you prefer, you can actually use a razor. <coughs> the thing about a razor, though, you have to be extremely careful that you don't go through too far and cut your fabric loose on the back side. Instant way to ruin a good cover job. Not only that, it's expensive. And again, you see I let the glue run past the edge of the joint a little bit and it makes that fabric cut real easy and clean. Top of the false far here. <clears throat> cut all this surplus fabric off of here. And the glue will thermally activate, so it's real easy to come back a little later. Any little loose edges like this will hit with the iron and they'll nail right down. And cut this right along the edge here. There we go. More a little bit right here. There. A little bit of work with the iron. Nail these edges down. You can see there's actually was glue on the on the fabric. There was some glue on the tubing there and just pushing it in. It actually sticks right down. Makes a nice finished edge around here. There we go. 